Hello, Mark McLaurie from Patriot Electronic Security Systems here. Today we have a really special video for you. It is the first in a series of how-to videos that we are producing. The series will contain information and instructions on how to do various tests that we as security alarm installers and low voltage technicians do on a day-to-day -day basis. In this video, we're going to start with cabling. More specifically, the different and correct types of cable to use in each situation. Keep in mind, in the security industry, we use so many different types of cable, it is impossible to cover them all. However, we'll cover the ones that are used most often. Now, usually I would do these hands-on demonstrations in my shop. But it just so happens my shop is in my garage, which is not heated, and if you live anywhere in the northeastern part of the United States, you know we are currently experiencing some record cold temperatures here. I don't expect I'm going anywhere near my shop till probably April. Therefore, I'm going to do the demonstrations for the next few videos right here in my office. So let me refocus the camera to a close-up on my side table here and we'll proceed with the demonstration. Okay, I am now going to introduce you to the five most common types of cable that we use in the security alarm industry. The first example here is stranded cable and more specifically this example is two conductor stranded cable simply because there are two conductors inside the outer sleeve. Uh, this particular example is also 18 gauge, which means um, when we talk gauge on a, on a cable or a wire, uh, we're talking about the thickness of the conductor. Uh, the lower the number, the thicker the wire. That's important to know. It has an inverse relationship. So a 18 gauge wire is actually, the conductor is actually thicker than a 22 gauge wire, uh, even though with the 22 gauge wire the number is higher. Right. We use the, uh, this particular two conductor uh, cable for um, usually power connections in our industry. Its sister cable is four conductor stranded cable. Uh, this particular example is 22 gauge, which is uh, thinner wire than our previous example a second ago. And we use this for all kinds of applications in the security industry. Uh, we connect uh, smoke detectors to the alarm panel. We connect um, keypads to the alarm panel. Uh, in that particular instance, uh, data runs over uh, two wires and power runs over the other two wires. The next example would be coax cable and um, we use this, uh, this is RG6. Coax cable comes in, in two flavors, RG6 and RG59. This is an example of RG59. Actually this is an example of uh, Siamese cable uh, using RG59. The RG6 can carry uh, more data faster. It's a thicker cable and it's used for, um, for uh, home theater applications uh, with, uh, with digital uh, cable and uh, digital satellite TV. These days it requires uh, a thicker cable uh, that can transfer data at a, at a faster rate than the old RG59. We're going to take a closer look at uh, coax cable in, in a few minutes. Uh, I just want to just want to go through the basics here. And again, like I said, there's the RG59 Siamese cable. Now this is interesting. This is basically two cables in one. Uh, one is coax and the other one, let me see if I could take the sleeve off here. Yeah. The other connected cable is two conductor, uh, is two conductor stranded. We use this in the CCTV industry. Uh, the two conductor stranded carries power to the camera, and the camera's data is carried on the coax cable. 
The final example I'd like to show you today, I'm sure you're all familiar with this, is CAT6 cable. It's network cable. Inside the outer sleeve, we have eight conductors, which is actually four pairs. Now, the difference between the, the conductors on a CAT5, CAT5E, or CAT6 cable, um, then the stranded pairs I showed you earlier, is that these pairs are twisted. Uh, they're twisted to prevent crosstalk between the conductors. Uh, the more twists per inch, the better uh, the pair is insulated against uh, crosstalk. And that is the big difference between CAT5 and CAT5E and CAT6 is the twisting, the number of twists per inch that the cable has. Uh, CAT6 is also a, a thicker gauge than CAT5E. CAT5E, I believe, is 24 gauge and CAT6 is 23 gauge wire. And on some, but not all, CAT6 cable, you will find this spline. And uh, it's a separator. It acts as a separator. It, it separates the four twisted pairs inside the outer sleeve. Um, like I said, not all CAT6s have it. I don't believe it is part of the CAT6... Um, um, it's part of the CAT6 requirements uh, as far as a rating goes. Um, I happen to like it. A lot of people, a lot of installers find it a bit of a pain. Uh, they have to cut it away uh, once they, you know, uh, once they install, once they try to terminate the cable. Uh, but for me, I, I don't mind cutting it away. I, anything that will prevent, uh, that helps prevent interference uh, is all right with me. As promised, I want to take a closer look at the coaxial cable. I want to kind of show you how this cable is built, and I'm going to superimpose a still photograph of it in the upper part of the screen because it's difficult to get a, a good focus on, on the cable from uh, using video mode. Uh, the first thing I want you to notice is the center core, the center conductor. It's made out of copper, and that is what carries the data from one end of the cable to the other. Around the copper conductor, you will see a white insulator. And uh, that's called the dielectric insulator. Uh, it is made out of PVC or sometimes Teflon. And it is the uh, copper conductor's first line of defense against uh, damage and interference. Around the dielectric insulator, you will see either, in this case, aluminum. Sometimes it's made out of copper shielding. And uh, that is the main line of defense against electromagnetic interference, uh, radio interference, um, for, for, uh, for the copper conductor. Now, this uh, shielding comes in couple, uh, several flavors. It comes in dual shielded and quad shielded um, versions when you buy the cable. I only buy quad shielded cable. I don't, uh, I don't bother with dual shield uh, cable. The reason being is when I run a cable, sometimes that's a pretty time consuming process. And the last thing I want to find out is that I'm getting, that the path I took with the cable in the run, I'm getting interference, I'm either getting sh shadows or ghosts, uh, on the image because, um, because I'm getting interference. Uh, a quad shielded cable will minimize that possibility. It may not eliminate it, but it will certainly minimize, uh, minimize the issue. Um, the quad shielded cable, the way it's built, I'm gonna show you another part here. You have a smooth, a smooth sheath surrounded by a braided sheath, and the braided sheath looks like this and it this would just s slide over the smooth sheathing um, that's dual shield and then if for quad shield you have it again you have yet another smooth sheath on top of the braid and yet another braid on top of the second sheath and um, that's like I said that's the only type of cable I buy when it comes to uh, coaxial uh, coaxial cable 
those are the most common types of cable that you're going to come across in the security alarm industry. But we really cannot complete our discussion on cabling without talking a little bit about cable ratings. When we discuss cable ratings, we're talking about what type of environment and or the electrical load the cable is approved for. It's difficult to give you this information without some type of visualization. So let's go to my desktop where I can show you some charts I put together to assist in our discussion. Okay, now that we are back at the desktop, um, the best place to start our discussion regarding cable ratings is to ask ourselves, what rating does our cable need, uh, do we need to use for our particular project? Now remember, a cable's rating indicates uh, either the load the cable can carry and or the environment in which it can be installed. I created a small chart to serve as a visual aid to help us in the decision-making process as a pyramid. And again, let me scale this down. I redid the chart as a pyramid and broke it down into the three different classifications of the cable that we use most frequently. One is plenum, one is riser, and one is general purpose. If you notice here, basically what this chart is, it's a chart that is used uh, to determine what cable you would use for your project in a two-step process. The first step is to determine what type of cable you need for your project. Do you need Cat5e? Do you need RG6? Stranded? Once that's determined, now you have to determine the rating. And that's step two here. And that's going to be based, as I said, on your code requirements. Now, any cable rating on this pyramid can be substituted for the rating above it. So let's discuss that for a minute. If you need, by code, you need riser wire, a riser cable for your project, you can substitute it with plenum cable. If you need general purpose cable, you can substitute it with either riser or plenum cable. Now, jumping from general purpose to riser, there is an increase in price on that cable. It's, it's manageable, though. It's, it's reasonable. I, I like buying riser, uh, riser wire. I very rarely buy anything less than riser wire. The jump from riser to plenum, that's a big jump. Right? You would only install plenum where code absolutely requires it um, because it is, it is at such a premium price. And we're going to discuss that in the next video. Basically, I'm going to get in uh, on my next video, I'm going to get into what a plenum is, what constitutes a plenum, and why you have to use special plenum cable in a plenum. Um, there is one designated designation that's not shown on the chart, and it's it's X cable. It's uh, what's called dwelling cable. Um, usually, there's an X after its classification. For example, if you have class two cable CL2, the dwelling rating would be CL2X. Right? This is the absolute absolute lowest rated cable you can get, and I never touch this stuff. Basically. It, it, it's only allowed in certain municipalities in a residential uh, install, never a commercial install, and it would have to be a, a residential in, install with no more than two families. It, there's so many limitations on it, and it, it, it's such basic wire, I don't, I don't touch this stuff. In fact, like I said, I very rarely buy less than riser wire, because it's rare that I would use a whole spool of cable without needing to uh, needing to uh, to go up or down uh, a floor and if you need to go up and down a floor you need you you need riser wire all right notice here the plenum rated cable is required for plenum airspace and the, a plenum airspace can be defined as pretty much any open space that's used for air circulation now that is a very 
basic description of a plenum uh, airspace. And like I said, I'm going to devote a whole video to that. Another classification in wiring, and this probably falls better. This can be this can fall under all three categories. There's class two and class three. Um, if you're talking about a class two riser wire, it would be rated CL two R R for riser. If it was class two plenum, it would be rated CL two P for plenum. The difference between class two and class three in our industry is really nothing to be concerned about. Class two uh, can basically carry up to 150 volts and class three wire can carry up to 300 volts. We usually don't, in, in our industry, we usually don't get up that high in, in, in voltage. So class two or class, th class three would be irrelevant to us. Other than cost, we usually stay at class two. More important than the voltage limitations on class two and class three wire is the fact that CL2 and CL3 are in wall rated approved. Meaning, um, if you run a, uh, a wire or a cable through an enclosed wall, it needs to have the CL2 or CL3 rating. Uh, if it does not, uh, that cable cannot be used for in wall, in -wall runs. Um, that also goes uh, f uh, for cable that we buy pre-made, such as, uh, for example, HDMI cable. Uh, when we do installations of TVs and monitors that are mounted on a wall, many times there's an HDMI cable that is running down to a cable box or a digital satellite box uh, down lower to an audio-video cabinet. And a lot of times the customer wants that, uh, that HDMI cable hidden. Uh, inside the wall. If uh, if that's the case, that HDMI cable must be rated at CL2 or CL3. It's hard to find CL3 rating on HDMI cables, but you could find uh, CL2s uh, pretty much. Uh, pretty, they're pretty much readily available. Um, but uh, keep that in mind. All cables, be it uh, be it pre-made cables or wire runs. If they're going to be in an enclosed wall, they need to be CL2 or CL3 uh, rated. One, uh, like I said, one uh, definition that I don't have listed on this chart is riser. Now, you would use, you already said you use plenum when you're in a plenum airspace. Riser would be used if you need to run the wire from one floor up or down to the next floor. Uh, whenever you do that, you need a riser rated cable. Well, that about wraps up our introduction to cables commonly used in the security alarm industry. If you would like me to email you any of the charts we used in this presentation, please feel free to go to our website and send me a request via email on the Contact Us page. At this time, I would like to take the opportunity to thank you for watching this video. And for more information on who we are and what we do, please feel free to go to our website, www.patriotsecuritysystems.com. Stay safe.